Currently, we are going through a worldwide pandemic. Everyone is waiting for the pandemic to end. If we look at the earliest pandemics in history, most of them ended after killing large number of people in the affected areas. Some of them even ended after there was no one left to die. With time, people learned that taking medical and health initiatives can halt the spread of these diseases and ultimately end the pandemics. In this video, I will be talking about four deadliest pandemics in history that ended with major human initiatives and inventions. The first pandemic in the list is the Black Death. With the death of almost half of the population of Eurasia in only four years, the Black Death is considered the deadliest pandemic in human history. Bubonic plague was the cause of this pandemic. The bacteria that caused the disease is called Yersinia pestis, which most likely originated in Central Asia or East Asia. From there, it traveled along the Silk Road and reached Crimea by 1347. The disease was carried by fleas that lived on black rats. Some rats lived in the merchant ships that spread the disease throughout whole Europe and North Africa. The Black Death resulted in the deaths of up to 75 to 200 million people. Without any medical advantages and the knowledge of how rats help spreading the disease, there was almost nothing to do. But by the time, people started to understand that the disease can spread from human to human. And the way most people from the infected areas came to the uninfected areas was by the ships, and more specifically merchant ships. So they came up with the concept of quarantine. The word quarantine originated from quarantina, which means 40 days. At first, it was tarantine, which means 30 days. All the merchant ships that came from an affected area had to wait 30 days in a restricted nearby island to see if any of the crew members showed any symptoms of bubonic plague. But the bubonic plague had a 37-day period from infection to death. So in 1448, the waiting time was prolonged to 40 days, which gave birth to the term quarantine. The quarantine formula proved to be effective. It was highly successful in determining the health of the crews. So the tradition of quarantine continued in the whole Europe during future outbreaks. Although the Black Death already took many lives, the 40-day formula had a great effect in handling the spread of the disease through the sea. But people still didn't know how to handle the outbreak on ground. The Privy Council of England came up with a solution of that problem during a plague epidemic in London. The Great Plague of London lasted from 1665 to 1666. It was caused by the same disease as Black Death. It caused the death of almost 100,000 people in London. The previous pandemic, Black Death wiped out 75% population of London while the Great Plague killed 25%. It was a way smaller outbreak than Black Death, but still it was named Great Plague because it was the last widespread outbreak in London during a 400 years long second pandemic period in Europe. The Great Plague ended earlier and was the last major plague outbreak to ever happen in London. What was the reason behind it? Well, this time the Privy Council of England implemented some strict rules to control the spread of plague on ground. Reports of other places in Europe being affected began to reach England by 1660. They applied the quarantine formula before even the disease started to spread. Again, all the ships that came from affected areas had to wait 40 days in a restricted island. This was pretty effective to handle the disease on water. But if somehow the disease reached onshore, it could now spread by humans. The Privy Council of England had to do something to control the disease on ground. At first, they thought of maintaining hygiene. At the time, London wasn't as safe and clean as it is now. The poorer parts of the city was extremely dirty and overcrowded, so maintaining hygiene was almost impossible. The Privy Council then came up with something new. They introduced the city with household quarantine. The order to separate the sick people and isolate them in a distant place far away from other people. As the number of confirmed cases started to increase, they sealed the houses of infected people and forced them to stay inside their homes. And all the family members of the infected person had to carry a white pole when they went out in public so that everyone in the street could maintain distance from them. Some of these rules were cruel, but definitely helped to stop the epidemic in only one year. While these steps were effective to slow the spread of this disease, a major technology was discovered in the 18th century that could certainly prevent a disease. Vaccine. 
one of the most important discovery in human history. While the actual vaccine was discovered in 1796, the Chinese people started practicing a similar method from the 16th century, and all of this started to prevent a disease called smallpox, an infectious disease that caused several outbreaks in different times all over the world. The origin of smallpox is unknown. Earliest evidence of the disease dates back to the 3rd century BCE in Egyptian mummies. The risk of death after contracting the disease was about 30%. In 18th century Europe, almost 400,000 people died from this disease every year. And in last 100 years of its existence, it killed almost 500 million people worldwide. The Chinese people started practicing variolation in the 16th century. It is the oldest method of inoculation that could create a strong immunity against smallpox. This technique used dried scabs that was collected from a mild smallpox patient. Dried scabs were grounded into powder and puffed up into the patient's nostril. This would cause a mild infection. The variolated patient showed same symptoms as the actual infected patient. It took two to four weeks to cure. But after fully recovering, the variolated patients would acquire a strong immunity against smallpox. There are hints that ancient Indians used to practice a similar method, but there is no ancient Sanskrit script that supported this theory. In the year 1700, an employee of the East India Company stationed in China sent a report to the Royal Society of London describing this old method of variolation. But no action was taken. Later, India and Middle East started to practice variolation and through the Ottoman Empire, variolation reached Europe. Although this method was effective to prevent smallpox, this wasn't fully safe. The variolated patients still had a 2% risk of death. But this was a way better option compared to a 30% risk of death with the naturally acquired smallpox. Besides, it was the only option for people until 1796 when the British doctor Edward Jenner demonstrated that an infection with a relatively weak cowpox virus could create immunity against smallpox virus. He inoculated James Pipps, the eight-year-old son of his gardener, with material taken from a cowpox patient. After six weeks, Jenner inoculated James with smallpox to check if he was immune to smallpox. And it worked. He had no effect. The boy was immune to smallpox. Although a safer version of the smallpox vaccine was discovered later, Edward Jenner is still considered the founder of vaccinology. It took a long time to vaccinate most of the people on Earth. In 1980, the World Health Organization announced that smallpox had been completely eradicated from the face of the Earth. Before moving forward, if you appreciate our effort on making this video, then please like the video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. The last pandemic in the least is the cholera, a disease caused by the bacteria Vibrio cholerae. The first cholera pandemic originated in India in 1817 and spread across the whole world causing seven major pandemics in last 200 years. Primary symptoms of the cholera patients are watery diarrhea and liquid vomiting. Without any treatment, the patient can produce 10 liters of diarrhea a day and due to dehydration, the patient can die within a few hours. Cholera normally spread by the contamination of water and food. Like other infectious diseases, the transmission of cholera was a mystery back then. Most of the scholars at the early 19th century believed in the miasma theory, according to which diseases like cholera and bubonic plague were caused by a bad air called miasma. English physician John Snow was one of the few scholars who didn't support this theory. By his previous research, John Snow believed that cholera spread by the contamination of water, and during the cholera pandemic in London, he got a way of demonstrating that contaminated water was actually the source of cholera. In 1854, an outbreak killed many people in a neighborhood in London called Soho. Snow studied all the records of Soho very deeply and found out that most of the people who died lived near a Broad Street water well. He suspected the water was contaminated. With some more information, Snow was able to convince the local officials to close the Broad Street drinking well, and soon cholera attacks on Soho diminished. Snow's work was a breakthrough in public health research. Although officials weren't convinced immediately, but in future when the germ theory established, developed countries started to emphasize the protection of water from contamination and a secure sewage system. 
Although cholera is eradicated in the developed countries, some developing and undeveloped nations are still dealing with cholera due to contamination of water by poor sewage system. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed, like, share and leave a comment. And remember I'll keep uploading new videos, so don't forget to subscribe.